Hello and welcome to the 51st in a series of webcasts with parents as partners supporting students in the 21st century. It's Monday, June the 11th, 2012 and our topic tonight is turning walls into windows, making learning transparent with an emphasis on the parent in transparent. And uh, with us tonight uh, talking about that topic is special guest Aaron Pulley. Thank you so much for joining us, Aaron. Thank you. I'm, I'm super excited. Great. I'm Maria Chesley Fisk, one of your hosts tonight on Parents as Partners with Lorna Consentini. I am here because I'm passionate about family engagement and student learning. Schools are so important for our children and provide such stimulating learning environments full of resources for learning, both academic learning and the sort of life-wide learning our 21st century need. And so schools can nurture so many skills uh, that today's kids need, working with teams, creativity, problem solving, being persistent, and families nurture those skills too. We get a lot of practice with uh, problem solving and persisting with our families, for example. So when educators can work with families, I know Lorna and I both strongly agree, and so do all of, all of you uh, joining us tonight, that when families and educators come together and bring all we know uh, about the children and about learning and nurture those children, we can be a mighty powerful team. So we want to thank the many, many folks who have contributed to Parents and Partners and Make It What It Is. In all of our webcast, Parents as Partners is focused on how to improve the dynamics within the school system to overcome barriers, anticipate potential issues, and foster attitudes about effective school, family, and community partnerships. We'd like to take this opportunity to thank Jeff LeBeau and Dave Cormier and World Bridges Network for their support of this webcast series. World Bridges is a network of individuals and organizations that use live interactive webcasting and other new media technologies to help people connect, learn, and collaborate. There are a variety of shows every week. EdTech Weekly, EdTech Brainstorm, Teachers Teaching Teachers, uh, and Conversations as Seedlings is another one. We also thank Steve Hargadon and Blackboard Collaborate for the use of this room. And we send out thanks to Kim Case and Peggy George, who uh, even if not here tonight, uh, are always helpful uh, in the chat and have been in the history of this. And there's, I just see that Peggy George just joined right now, so wonderful. And I will pass it now to Lorna, who's going to talk to us about some of the many resources associated with Parents as Partners and get us started. Lorna? Great. Thanks very much, Maria. I'm going to start right away with a introduction to our guest today because I think we've got uh, mostly old faithfuls, not old, but faithfuls anyway, and I don't need to go through world mapping and poll questions because I think we've all learned how to use um, Blackboard Collaborate, and I want to give a lot of time to Aaron, our special guest tonight, because Aaron and I have had a chance to at least have a very extensive conversation and we really didn't know how we were going to compartmentalize it into this evening. So I want to give him as much time as possible because he has a lot of great things to share when I call them a treasure chest of ideas for peer engagement. So Aaron, it is with uh, great pleasure that I extend an our welcome and our thanks to you this evening. I would like you to start out please by just giving the audience a sense of um, who you are, your background, your family, and uh, Maybe how we came up to meet up, and then I'm going to let you just go right ahead and take the microphone with your presentation. Thanks very much for being with us. The mic is yours for a minute. Okay. Well, thank you, everybody. Can everybody hear me? We can, loud and clear. Perfect. Well, thank you very much. Just wanted to make sure that I was here. And thank you. I'm very excited to um, be here with all of you tonight because it's it's together and the brainstorm and the thoughts and the sharing that the real power in uh, both student and parent engagement come through. So I'm excited to, to come and share. And I reiterate Lorena's uh, comment in that we had an amazing conversation the other night. And uh, those who know me 
you know, I'm uh, very passionate about the things that I am involved in and uh, quite often can get uh, off on various tangents. So I, w I have made myself, and I tweeted it out just a little bit earlier as proof, uh, a long script, which my wife will say is not common <laughs> for me, but I have made sure that I wanted to keep things nice, clear, and concise for our conversation tonight. So um, I do thank you once again, and it's uh, very excited to be here as I was not a part of the conversations of us of uh, hashtag parent engagement or with parents as partners prior to this year, and uh, that would be because I was in a different role, um, and I and I'd like to explain what that role was because it really does shape who I am and how I look at everything in education, no matter what it is, and it's allowed me to um, spread my wings, if you will, to uh, broaden the the uh, breadth and and, and scope, or the role in scope, as a, as a principal I'm quite fond of would say. And uh, so let me just introduce myself. So again, my name is Aaron Pulley. And if you read my bio as it's stated on my Twitter account, you'll see that it says that I am a consultant for student engagement and parent engagement, and uh, with a K-12 focus. And uh, I want you to know right off the bat that I'm a high school teacher by kind of origin from starting in my career. Um, but since being out in my consultantship role, I think I found my true calling, which uh, may, may have showed that the high school track wasn't necessarily where I was supposed to be. But we could talk about that more as we go through. But I'm a K-12 consultant for the Hamilton Wentworth District School Board, and I am the consultant for parent and student engagement. You'll see in my profile it says I have a 21st century fluencies lens, and I think that warrants a little bit of comment uh, so, so that you understand what that means and that it frames my, my lens and my mindset when supporting my board's parent engagement efforts and strategy. So I've been a consultant for three years. I started first as an information technology consultant for secondary schools. And that role was reshaped and renamed in our board um, to 21st century fluencies. That was an exciting change. And the new terminology puts the focus on innovative teaching and learning in a digital world and not on the technology itself. Whereas uh, as an information technology consultant, quite often people would look at me as if I was a technology supporter rather than a supporter of effective pedagogy using technology. So we've been very excited about that new frame. So it, uh, uh, and I stand strongly that no one is, and you'll hear me say this numerous times, and if you've been following me on Twitter, you'll know that I say this quite often. Uh, I don't believe that anybody is engaged by the sheer existence of any piece of technology. And I fully believe that it's the, infect the effective integration of technology into rich learning tasks, experiences within the learning environment that is the key. Technology does not engage students. It's teachers that engage students. It's parents that engage students. And technology is just one tool. Um, so when I refer to it as I go through, it's, it's one of many tools. And uh, there are, of course, a variety of other strategies that are in both parents and in teachers' toolkits. So in short, I've worked for quite a number of years helping educators, specifically with ideas, tips, and tricks for infusing technology into their teaching and learning practices, and of course, in their communication plans as well for a variety of stakeholders. So if they would like to communicate beyond the traditional paper um, uh, way or paper uh, format, they could uh, look into a digital format, and I could help them with that. So students, teachers, parents, and all stakeholders. Um, so. Anybody who knows me, and I, I know Aviva will probably chime in, and, uh, and uh, I see Lisa Neal, who's uh, been my principal in 21st Century Fluency, so it's very exciting that she's here tonight. She can, she can help share some of that mindset. And anybody that knows me will know that I, I, I think differently than many, and I'm always looking for new ways to engage people, um, even if it may, means uh, making it myself or working with other people who can help make it. So. Uh, the parent and student engagement role is brand new for our board. It was created this past year. I was excited to branch out beyond my uh, on-ground technological uh, infusion into education approach and uh, to help support engagement for both students and parents. As I've always seen, the two is uh, intricately linked. Anything that we do for students, I believe, is for parents and vice versa. And I've always wanted to be able to create that for lack of a better term, symbiotic link where uh, parents can be 100% a part of everything that we do for kids. 
And um, and that, of course, takes many forms. And it could be the conversations at the dinner table to support the homework. It could be creating a, a, an area off into the corner of your living room where you're going to support a, a nice quiet space for your child. Or maybe it's sitting down with them and, and, and doing some effective reading strategies or doing some computer work with them. But whatever it is, the bottom line is that in today's busy and complex world, our time is often limited with our children, and I know that specifically, and I often feel very guilty that I don't spend enough time with my children as I would like to. So the time that we do spend with them, we want to be special. And uh, so years ago, I asked myself what it would look like if the learning that occurs daily um, at both school and at home can er interact and be given a transparency that, uh, to me, and my opinion only, previously did not exist in my experiences. So if the only access we have to learning as parents in the classroom is our children's responses, and I think we can all empathize, those of us with children, if, if, if our only entry and understanding of classroom learning is the answer from our children to these questions, how was your day today? Or what did you learn today? Then I think we would all go through life thinking that absolutely everything was fine and that nothing at all happened. <laughs> and so, and, and to me, I kind of caught on to that very early. It doesn't matter if we're teaching kindergarten, grades 3, 5, 6, or 12. I, I, any child will answer that question the same. So I've always wanted, as a, as a teacher and as a consultant when I work with teachers, to try and be as transparent as we possibly can, make learning for children as clear, as collaborative and reciprocal as we possibly can, so that we can increase and enhance those relationships between teacher and student, teacher and parent, teacher and teacher, teacher and principal, parent and parent, and use all of those tools today that we have to create the most dynamic, symbiotic, and reciprocal relationship for everybody involved. So, and I'm excited to be a part of these conversations as part of my new role because I can bring that lens into this environment, but then also keeping in mind that what I'm about to present for you is part of strategies, little pieces of many strategies that we are implementing, that there are other issues or other challenges, other stakeholders and other groups and other ways of being engaged that we also have to keep in mind in the back of our head. Because in my previous role, I'll be the first one to say and admit that I think I always looked at everything through a screen. My first way to, to engage a student or to engage a parent would have been through some piece of technology. And, and, and in working with the parents that I have this year, I, I feel really grounded now in that I can see a broader spectrum. But I did want to introduce that to you so you, you can see where I'm going to be going uh, over, over the course of the next 40 minutes or so um, and to set the framework for my parent and student engagement uh, consultantship role. So, any questions thus far from anybody as to, as to my role or my kind of scope before moving on into the presentation? I don't have a question for you, but Aaron, I just want to, I wrote it in the chat that I, Hamilton Wentworth is really taking a proactive stance and I think I've talked to you before, but maybe you're the only specifically assigned individual in the province of Ontario who's got this role uh, all to yourself. So I'm really excited that that's happening and I think that the examples you're going to set this evening in the discussion is really going to uh, set the trend for not only Ontario, Hamilton, but uh, I always think it's a global audience. So um, there's my comment and no questions. I'll so take it away. Okay. Well, thank you. And it's... um. Yes, and, and so when this role was posted, I was like, well, what does that mean? Because everything I do, no matter what, throughout my entire career has always been for engagement. And all right, I'm not going to talk about it right now. I'm going to, I have a post all kind of generated that uh, I'm going to post tomorrow that you can read. To, it's called From Whence I Came, and it will provide for you the entire framework as to why engagement for me is absolutely vital um, for both parents and students. So. Just as a nice segue, Lorna, as you have mentioned HWDSB, I think I would like to show you that the parent engagement is a pillar of our annual operating plan. 
Okay. And first of all, I just want to mention throughout here, and I'm going to start here at this slide, and then I'm going to venture out and show you our annual operating plan. But you're going to hear me periodically throughout this presentation mention research that has been vital both to my understanding and both to our board's understanding and strategy of parent engagement, such as John Hattie. His visible learning work has been pivotal and has created um, much of us um, around what we do in education, as has Ken Leithwood's work on parent engagement, specifically the family path, which I'll be referring to shortly, and the importance of the family path in education. Debbie Pusher was, in, was introduced to me in September, um, and I fully uh, have enveloped her concept of parent involvement versus parent engagement, or I want to reverse that actually, parent engagement versus parent involvement, and how we can focus on what engagement means versus what we may have been doing in the past. And so these are, these are people I will refer to um, periodically as we go through um, the presentation today. OK, so. I do want to show, so I'm going to go out here for a second and make sure that that's where I want it to be, which it is, and then I'm going to do a share. Oh, I don't have any sharing applications present for some reason. Oh, start sharing. Okay, there we go. Uh, I don't see my Google. Hang on. Okay, can Google's open, is it? I don't see Google in there, Lorna. Can you? Okay, so you're going to share a Google Doc, right? No, just 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 want to share my Google Desktop. Is all okay, I want to do so it. you've got um, my Google Chrome. Chrome should be running in there. I don't, I don't see, see it running. running. So we'll stop it and start again. So go to the slides and click slides. And then okay. try start the sharing again and see if the window pops up for you. Okay, if not, that's okay. Well, oh, there it is. Beautiful. Right, we can see it showing now. Okay, so here's our perfect. So here's our strategic directions for the Hamilton Wentworth District School Board. So I definitely wanted to show you as a bit of a foundation setter as we go moving forward that parents is right there right in the center of this document as our partners and that there are a variety of different ways from supporting student learning at home to helping with homework all the way through parent reaching out grants and the parent involvement committee that are made very very clear and concise for parents so they can see and for you to see that uh, parent engagement Engagement is definitely something that is pivotal to our strategy in HWDSB for uh, helping to support, enhance, and improve student achievement and engagement. And as well, here is our annual operating plan. We have three pillars, know our students, know our staff, and know our parents and community down in the bottom row. And so I'm going to talk to you briefly about our tiered approach to uh, engagement, the importance of parent voice, and the importance of looking through an equity lens, all, all things I will refer to briefly tonight and that we can refer to later on and some of the strategies that we use as far as that is concerned. Tier 3 I'm going to focus on and I will mention to you um, when I talk about tiered approaches to parent engagement and you'll see that 21st century fluencies is, uh, is clearly laid out as well as a strategy for engaging parents as well as for engaging staff and as well as knowing our students as well. So these are just things I wanted to share with you as far as our parent engagement strategy is concerned. So just returning, I would like to, because I've mentioned Ken Leithwood and there are a few comments that he mentions that really do shape specifically how I think of parent engagement when I support the system and for how HWDSB is thinking of parent engagement as a whole as well. And I do want to refer to Ken Leithwood. And there is a video that I would like you to watch. And we're going to open it up here in the window. And I will let you know, um, because we were playing with it a little bit, you will need to uh, press play. For some of you, it may launch automatically. And for others, you may need to push play. So it's about three minutes long. Without further ado, I'm going to move forward. If you're having difficulties with the video, please post in the chat, and we can just move forward with the context of it if it's giving you some issues. 
Okay, so I'm just going to go to the uh, just one second. We're going to use web tour. I'm going to go to the web application no, sharing, right? On the web tour. Web tour. Then okay. drop it in that. And it's going to put the. Okay. And you have to hit enter. There you go. Okay. So there you are, folks. If you could just push play if it didn't start for you and just listen to what Mr. Leafwood has to say for a couple of minutes. And we're both going to shut off our mics. I will right now. Are you going to put your mic back on again? Okay, so I, I can, t I can tell, and it's the same as every conversation that I have had um, in the past. Whenever I mention Ken Leithwood, it, it really does bring up, and I'm going to share with you a blog post that I wrote not that long ago, and uh, he, he's not without some controversy, but it's important for us to, and I, and I want to set the framework for you for what Ken Leithwood is saying, just so that we can, we can think about it in a different way. And I'm going to say right now, I, I may challenge you a little bit. Um, depending on your background and your mindset tonight about parent engagement versus parent involvement. But there's one line in that video that maybe you can return to and, and listen to later and, and reflect upon that really resonates with me. And that is when Leithwood says bringing parents into the schools is not one of the high leverage strategies for influencing learning through the family path. It's what you can do. I'll repeat what you can do, so speaking to us as educators, to build the capacity of parents in their homes to work with their kids where there's going to be the biggest factor. That resonates strongly with me in the fact that we're moving beyond in this model the introduction into schools or the welcoming into schools, come on in for, uh, again, one of my favorite lines when the people that know me come on in for a, for a hot dog or a, for a weenie and, you know, those, and, or come on in for conversations where we're going to present something to you. Debbie Pushore talks about that form of parent involvement, as she would say, is very much the school or the teachers creating the agenda and presenting it back to a parent. Whereas if we can create some real authentic engaging materials where we're inviting parents in, not to listen specifically to a presentation, but to work with us in conversation, roll up sleeves, and we provide them with tips, tricks, and strategies to take home to be the teachers that they are in their house. So we as educators at, or as teachers be, are educators within a, an, an institutionalized format. But I'm myself as a parent, as you can see in my picture, my daughter Madea is seven, my daughter Tanit is three. I am very much her teacher, regardless about whether or not I'm an educator or not. I am a teacher as all parents are teachers from the day they were born in a variety of different ways. So if we can build and, and create that relationship from parent as teacher, educator as teacher, and co-produce the learning, as Ken Leith would say, would say, and I'm going to provide you another link that I haven't put there right away, but there are some neat things happening on our school board that the ministry has created videos for, but that we, we are co-producing learning together, and there is no division of labor, and the fact that a lot of parents are teaching their children, as Ken Leith would said, unwittingly sometimes, you know, it could have just been like spur of the moment. It could have been a social behavioral in, in instance of, uh, of, of behavior management. Or perhaps a child asked a question, why? We've all heard that from our, child, from our children, why? And then we've given them an answer. Well, we just taught them as parents. So interesting, and we won't dwell on this. Leithwood talks about half, 50% of the achievement that we're responsible for is not happening in our schools, but is happening in the homes. And if that's the case, then let's bridge those silos and capture those ideas. So here's some examples of high leverage engagement. He talked about how inviting parents into schools is not an example of high leverage engagement. So here are some examples of what are. 
Um, so um, I won't read them, but the whole concept of, and I'll just go to the bullet points, making learning an important part of a child's day, not just something that happens, supporting students both at home and at school, and a full participation in the life of the classroom, school, and the community. And I'm going to refer to in, in, in the examples and the kind of schema I'm going to present shortly in the third bullet point. Full participation, parent, student, and teacher in the life of the classroom, the school, and the community. Just another example, so just to give you a little bit more. So John Hattie, Visible Learning is another, there's the links are provided for you, um, would say, again, there are negative effects when parents' involvement involves a surveillance approach. Um, so just watching over, did you do your homework? Did you finish this? Did you do that? Rather than sitting down and saying, hey, I heard you did a science experiment today. Can you show me how to do it? Let's go into the kitchen. Uh, walk me through what you learned today. Um, rather than saying, did you finish your homework? A and so just a very different kind of idea. Um, so that scenario I just provided to you, hey, walk me through the science experiment that you just did, would, would involve some knowledge and understanding on, the, on behalf of the parents that they may or may not have, not assuming, but everybody comes from different walks of life, the language of schooling and the language of learning, that they can be interactive, they can participate with their children in interactive work, and then, as all parents, continuing to hold those high expectations for their children. Okay, so again, co-producing the learning, not dividing the labor, but being reciprocal partners, and the fact that um, parents are teachers of their children. So I do want to share with you very, very quickly, and I want to move into some neat examples to share with you, and I have some uh, awesome guests joining us today that you'll see off to the left-hand side there. We have Jared Bennett, a colleague of mine in 21st Century Fluencies, who serves the West Cluster of HWDSB. We have uh, Lisa Neal, who's the principal of 21st Century Fluencies. Mr. Fox is doing amazing things that I would like to share with you. Thomas Rowe is another consultant with our school board. So um, these are people who could provide for you some neat contexts. Um, for where we're heading. But this is the tiered approach to parent engagement that we work with in HWDSB. When I talk about tiered approaches to engagement, tier one, if you hear me refer to that at all, that's for all. So these are parent engagement strategies that are for everybody, universal. So those parent-child workshops and activity nights, we have one uh, that we hold multiple times a year here in our school board. It's called Focus for Family. Uh, parents come in and they can have a meal with their children and then participate in interactive workshops, literacy, numeracy, digital citizenship, um, the list goes on. Parent-teacher nights, of course, newsletters, and which are uh, physical paper copy, perhaps, or websites, virtual copies of information provided from the school or the classroom. Tier two would be what we would say are strategies for some. And these, these are also mirrored in, uh, in our student engagement policies as well. So grade eight option nights, which are transition strategies. So schools would have those uh, moments for, uh, say, high schools, and it would bring the grade eight students in. They would have an option sheet night. They become acclimated to the school that they would, uh, that they would attend. Uh, special education advisory groups for assistive technology, students that, those some students that require the use of technology to help support their learning, translated documents for newcomers or for those who speak a language other than English, and interpretation uh, services, perhaps for a parenting, uh, for a parent-teacher interview where um, the, there is a huge language barrier. And that tier three that I had mentioned is our uh, for a few, targeted, focused, specific strategies that are aimed towards meeting a specific group, um, such as meeting with school staff for SWISH is uh, settlement workers in schools, for um, newcomer uh, for newcomer parents who, who, who may be coming from a refugee camp from another, uh, or another country or would be moving into our city for the first time and they need to acclimate to the city, to the, to the, to the, to the culture, to the, to the uh, environment and the education system. And parents of an uh, English language learner, ELL acronym, uh, attending formal school for the first time, perhaps again coming from a refugee camp, they have never been in a formal school environment or for providing uh, information session for 
for uh, parents um, for uh, going into special class uh, from elementary school. So these would be things that um, are good for all, some, and few. So that kind of sets the stage for our premise of parent engagement and our strategy for parent engagement. And the, the tiers themselves are our necessity to help break down the barriers of a one-size-fits-all cookie-cutter approach to any form of engagement. It doesn't matter who we're talking about or what audience we're talking about. One size does not fit all. Everybody comes from a variety of different backgrounds, with a variety of different strengths, with a variety of different needs. Um, and we, we need to understand and know each individual, whether it be a student, whether it be a staff member, or whether it be a parent. It's very, very important that we understand the person as an individual so that we can respond to them and to meet their, and to meet their needs. This is a blog post I wanted to share with you is the uh, engagement versus involvement kind of concept. And I'm just going to uh, shoot out to that for one second. And I'm um, going to use the um, application sharing so that we can um, follow each other together. So this is my blog post on parent engagement and involvement. I'm not going to go through it. I'll, I'll leave it for you. But that Debbie Pushor example that I talked about, about engagement versus involvement, is laid out here, as is the more specifics of Ken Leithwood's um, concept of family path in amongst rational emotions and the organizational paths. The, the idea here, or the differentiation from parent involvement and parent engagement is this implication that the person engaged, so the parent, is integral and essential and is brought into the act because of care and commitment. And so engagement it enables parents to take their place alongside educators in the schooling of their children, fitting together their knowledge of children teaching and learning with the teacher's knowledge. Which returns me to Leithwood. Bringing parents into the schools is not one of the high level strategies for influencing learning, he says. And I think the emphasis here is on student achievement and student learning. Because relationship building is absolutely essential between home and school and teacher and parent. That is vitally important. But to me, in my opinion only here, is sometimes I feel that traditional approaches to parent engagement stop there. They stop at relationship building. And parents are rarely given the opportunity to be empowered to discuss the learning of their children and their role in it. And again, I'm generalizing here because there are pockets of excellence and I've seen them. But I also see parents as teachers in the home and educators as teachers in a more institutionalized setting. So how, and this is a question I've asked myself and something that has driven my work and how I support um, people, is how do we bridge those two worlds? How do we bring parent is teacher, educator is teacher, together. How do we make learning visible? How do we do it in such a way that I as a parent, you as a parent, know what is going on in a classroom on any given day? How can we set those conditions for learning that I don't have to ask my child what they did at school today because I already know? And then, because I already know what they did today, I can extend that. Not only can I extend it, but because I fully understand what they did today, I can give them some new opportunities, and then I can, I can give that back to the teacher in such a way so that the teacher can also see what they did at home. So I didn't just provide a space for my child to complete her handout. I was given an opportunity to fully be a part of her learning and I was able to provide my knowledge and my understanding. And then I was able to share that back to the teacher as well so that it would benefit not only my child, but it could benefit other children within that classroom as well. So that leads me here. And I'm, you, you heard me talk for quite a bit. And I, I would like to share with you Jared. And um, if he would, I'm going to have him share in a couple of minutes. And Jared, I'll let you, uh, I'll let you know when you could, because then you could hear a different voice. There are two learning spaces in today's day and age. There's a physical learning space, which is the brick and mortar 
environment of a classroom. But then there's that virtual learning space, because learning happens everywhere. It doesn't just happen at a school between 8.30, 9 o'clock, 3 o'clock, and then stop, and then start again the next day. Learning is ongoing. Learning continues everywhere. How do we capture that? How do we capture and blend and honor the physical spaces of yesterday and the digital spaces of today? And how do we provide those opportunities for everybody to be engaged? I'm going to walk you through here what we call the HWDSB Commons. This is a social learning network, which is based off of a WordPress, not a WordPress.com install that you may be familiar with, but a WordPress.org where you can download the software and install it on your own servers. This arose as a response to a growing desire among teachers that we have worked with to create blogs and authentic and dynamic extensions of their physical learning environments. Many teachers that we have worked with were using WordPress.com, Blogger.com, Tumblr.com, Kid Blogs, Collaborize, the list goes on and on and on. Teachers were using it. It was difficult for us to support them. There was no systemic answer and there was no common hub for students and parents. So the 21st Century Fluencies Department of HWDSB worked to fill the gap and, to, and provide a tool that all staff and students of the board could access. So I'll let you read these later, but I do want to share with you a couple of posts, and then maybe Jared now is a good time to chime in, if you can, um, about the commons and these are his posts, which the links are there for you to read, So he, um, about what the commons is, the rationale for it, and I'd like Jared to speak to it for a couple of minutes if you could. Okay, what, uh, what, what exactly would you like me to share about it? I don't know, just, um, just speak to it just, just briefly as to uh, where it came from and uh, to its benefit for students and their parents. And then we have a few, uh, we have Aviva and perhaps uh, Ian, Mr. Fox, who could talk about their blogs when we get there. Well, I guess really the Commons was born out of a need we saw in the system to ensure that the blogs or blogging as a as a tool and and, uh, and and sharing on the web as a as a framework for teaching wasn't just something that was used exclusively by the the, the few uh, tech experts who who knew their way around um, web 2.0 tools. We found that uh, we had a number of different people out in the board uh, who were able to adopt. The, uh, the Edmodos of the world, or the edu blogs, or the kid blogs, but um, the entry point for teachers who weren't necessarily savvy in that space was uh, potentially too large. Um, the other thing that we found is from a building capacity framework, if I was using Edmodo and uh, Thomas was using Posters and Aviva was using Blogspot, there was no way for us as islands in and of ourselves to, to build the capacity of each other. So the uh, the, the Tower of Babel syndrome, where we may all be sitting in the same room, but we're all talking a different language based on the tool we used, was uh, certainly something that we were trying to battle against. And uh, a board provision tool, a, a similar space in which all teachers could uh, create, a, 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 or we could create for teachers an easy entry point into that world of blogging was certainly key. The other piece of this puzzle that's really important is that social networking space that you're seeing at the front. That allows me to connect very easily with other teachers within my board. So in the past, I would only know that Mr. Fox had a blog if he had shared his specific URL at whatever commercial name, posters, WordPress, blogspot type platform he may have been working on. Um, but what the Commons allows me to do is, is, is find all of my colleagues and find all of the different teachers on, uh, who, who, are, who are teaching visibly uh, within the board. I can go up to the top there and just search grade six and, uh, and harvest out uh, a nice list of other teachers who are teaching the same grade as I am or uh, teaching uh, a, a similar subject. Um, and I can lurk in the best way possible um, in those classrooms of my peers 
and of my colleagues and uh, be able to get a good sense of what's happening in those classrooms. I think what we we miss as professionals is we can teach right next to another teacher and have no idea what goes on in their classroom, have really no idea whether um, they're even good at their jobs, as terrible as that sounds. Um, you, uh, you have a hard time seeing and sharing the learning that's happening within the classroom because invariably you're teaching at the same time. So it still allows me to see what my colleagues are doing and, and learn from them in asynchronous ways uh, that I think is very powerful. Yeah, and so what this is, let's see here, am I, let's make sure I'm still here. Perfect. Thanks, Jared. So as, as Jared had mentioned, what this allows, this network, and I'm going to walk you through and see a whole bunch of other teachers' uh, uh, blogs, and then maybe if they could, uh, oh, I see Mujin, welcome. Mujing, um, and uh, Mr. Fox maybe briefly can talk about the strategies that they use this particular tool for to engage their, um, their parent community as well as the students that they teach. And this particular interface provides multiple points and entries of uses. So, so teachers could use this particular tool. And what you just saw there that I walked you through is the social networking layer. Parents can't see that by default. You need to log in as a student in order to see those. And we always encourage students to sit down with their parents, log in, and sit down with them side by side and have those conversations, those internal conversations about what is going on within the social learning environment. And on the outside, some blogs I'll share with you, teachers can use them traditionally as a, as a unidirectional one-way announcement board, announcements, posting of resources, those daily learning, learning summaries, daily synopses, rubrics, learning goals, success criteria, celebration of work, sharing of best practices. The list goes on and on about how they can post these things in a visible, transparent space where all of a sudden those brick and mortar walls of a classroom just crumble down. The, the walls of the classroom become windows, windows and, uh, that are so transparent that not only can I see as a parent what is happening in that classroom on a daily basis so that I don't have to ask my child what it is you did at school today because I already know, but I also, from my workspace, from my phone while I'm out on the road, I can interact and, and, and I can talk to my child and I could even print out the work they did at 11.56 a.m. and I can have it on the fridge by the time they get home so that when they walk in, their work is celebrated in a physical space. So that, that one-way unidirectional added, uh, idea that is kind of like an old Web.1 idea it, it, it is emphasized and elaborated in a 2.0 world where dynamic engagement is a component, where comments, conversations, reflections, ideas, suggestions uh, can all kind of grow. Parents can see what their children are doing and learning on a daily basis. They can interact with it and they never have to ask anymore what you did because they already know what it is that they did. And I'm going to give you an example for a second before we talk about some of these awesome exemplary blogs. This is, oh, the picture is not here. Um, so, but there was a picture, and it's probably because I added it a little bit later. There is a picture that I will want to share with you that is from my daughter's journal. And just one sec to see if, if I can pull this picture up, because I really do want you to see it. Um, just one second here. Bear with me. I do want you to see it because it's not here in the in, in the picture. Just gonna pull it up. Uh, here, you just load content. You should be able to find it that way. Good idea. Load content. Top Where is right. That? Beside recording. Oh, there it is. Thank you. Thank you. Perfect. And probably so asking you for a new bear page. With me. Bear with me, folks. I'll do this really quickly. Really quickly spawn. I do want you to see this picture because it really does emphasize what I'm talking about. And I'm looking at the here. picture, and I know that you have to let everybody see it because it makes the picture says a thousand words, right? It makes a really good point. There. Let's see. Hopefully, everybody can see this. Is it coming in? Let me go back one. 
It'll come back again. How come I can see it, but nobody else can? It's there Contact. now. Okay. So there, everybody. This, this is an example. This is a journal that came home um, the other day from my child. And this is her journal. So this is what she has written in. And I can honestly tell you, if you look up in the top left corner, in the, top, uh, in the next page in the top left corner, you're going to see two dates, March 20 and March 21. Today is June 11, first time I saw this. So as a parent, regardless of the fact that I'm an educator, I could never have had conversations with my child about this. And I could never have been a coach. I could never have been a mentor. I could never have had her read it to me. I never could have worked with her on this because I've never seen it before. It came home to me full. And I, I was not able to, without, without beating a, a dead horse, as the old saying goes, I, I was never given the opportunity to, to explore it with her. So when I think of a parent and I think of parent engagement, and you don't need to be an educator and you don't have to understand education language to understand this, this is just something that should be part of our conversations on a daily basis. And there's another picture for you. It's a big book. It's your classic little, little, little writing book. Again, April 5th, you can see it's full. Um, I sat with her. She could read it with me, but I couldn't help her with it along the way like it's finished. The, I hate to say it, but the learning is finished. And there was nothing more that I could do at this stage. Because she looked at me and she said, well, Daddy, it doesn't matter. It's done. Um, and it's like, well, no, it's not done. Can't we go back and look at it? Say, no, the book's finished. I'm on a new one. And it's like, oh, so, and that's my seven-year-old um, coming coming at me with that type of idea. So I did want to show that with you. And now, just kind of show you something else. Um, let's talk a little bit about how that can be different. Let's talk about blogs and how blogs as digital portfolios are extensions of that book that you just saw. They are extensions that are accessible through my screen. Again, another window into a classroom that I could have seen it on a daily basis. Maybe I was part of the conversation in it. Um, maybe there were chances that I could participate in it, such as this, Mr. Stewart's class. Um, again, windows, little videos, little YouTube videos. I'll leave them to you to go through and watch them. Their explorations on the smart board. I could see that. Their Glogster. They set up Glogster accounts today in class, and I could read that. I could explore what all of those things are. Let's go to another one. Ms. Theo's class. Look, these are Glogsters. So not like posters. Bristol board posters that you hung on a wall in your classroom that I as a parent could never see. These are posters that children made that I can look at them. Not only can I look at them, not only can I explore all of them, but then I could comment back on them. And then maybe briefly if she would, because I see her here and I don't want to put her on the spot, but maybe Miss um, Seal would like to speak to those um, if she would like to. If we can give her a microphone. Do you have a microphone, Mujin? Or maybe just in the chat? If not, I'll get Mr. Fox here in a second. I don't know if she has a microphone. I talked to them earlier if they if they would mind if I shared these. So all of these blogs I'm going to show you tonight have been they've allowed me to show them today. I don't know if she has a microphone. Yes, I think uh, Mujin and Mr. Fox have microphones now, Aaron. Do they? Mujin, do you have a microphone on? You just have to click Can you click talk. on talk? I don't know if she has a... Hello? Who's that? Who's that? That would be Ian Fox. Mr. Fox. Beautiful. Maybe you would like, maybe you would like to talk about your, about your particular blog. I didn't know I had to speak tonight, too. You don't have to. You don't have no. to. 
Um, I just can, know, I, you, can I just interrupt for a second? Aaron, if, Aaron, if, if, if he's, he's going to talk, then you need to show your mic off because we're getting feedback and we won't if it's just one mic. Okay. Okay. So what, what would you talk? like me to talk about? I'm sorry, Aaron. Maybe just about Maybe just how about you how use your use website to engage, engage parents. Okay, yeah, I use, so I've sort of started with two different websites. I originally had sort of a main website that I used for that one, what, that communication for what's coming home, what, what kind of assignments they have doing, what we're doing right now with success criteria, et cetera, et cetera. So sort of a one-way thing. Then I uh, moved into more with doing the blogging with the kids, which was new to me last year. And it's really what it's done is it's helped sort of continue conversations that we might have in class. And we just, we run the time. They're always short on time. And uh, it's given them the opportunity to continue that later on. This, yeah, that, that's the exact one. Room 32 speaks out. So again, it could be something we're working on from one of our TLCPs on poetry. And it gives them just a chance to quickly say something. And I'm finding some of my students who are very quiet in class. They're the first ones to come on here and comment in the evening. And they just feel more comfortable rather than sharing their ideas with class. And the kids can comment on each other's. And my next sort of step is looking for that extra piece where the kids will start looking at each other's and making comments about each other in terms of what they understood about theirs or maybe, ne or maybe next steps for the kids to do. So it's sort of turning the learning around a bit to them so they're not always hearing me talk or tell them what to do. So it's sort of get, giving me a chance to take a step back. Um, yeah, the other site you had, Aaron, pulled up there, the Mr. Fox Radio, that was new this year. Jared helped me set this up. I also teach the grade two and three media class. Actually, I was lucky this year, my principal gave me the opportunity to do a media class with them. So it's sort of, where do I go with it when I have them for 40 minutes a week? So we've done, it's given them an opportunity to learn a lot of the new, a lot of computer programs, which is great for them. They've really enjoyed. And then we started working into podcasts. So in class, they are working on descriptive writing and so on. So this has been a great way to take the writing that they've been working on with their regular classroom teacher and then turning into adding voice. So we, we listen to a number of radio shows and how to communicate our message better to others. As you can see, one student here went on for about 20 minutes with this. So there's parts one through four. And, uh, but again, it gave them the opportunity to say, well, maybe I spoke too much. So they can listen, they listen back to it after. So that immediate feedback, which the kids really like too. That's perfect. Thank That's you. That's perfect. Thank you. These, these are just a few of many examples that, um, that we have um, that we could show you. And, and, and these are just all beautiful examples of how all of a sudden w the learning that has occurred in the classroom is now open, transparent. Parents can listen to their children talk in that, in, in that instance that uh, Ian just shared with you from his uh, podcasts. I've gone through, and I'm not even a, a parent of these children, and I was able to go through and listen to some of these. And it's just amazing on the, the, uh, the accountable reflection, the accountable talk, listening to them speak, that ongoing assessment um, as, a, as, a, as a teacher, as coach, uh, for learning, helping them, guiding them, providing them feedback. It's just an, an amazing forum that is able to once again, and I'm and I'm going to sound like a broken record, but I really do look at breaking down those brick and mortar walls and those barriers, and and these examples such as this podcasting blog, Mr. Fox Radio, the the Room 32 speaks out where we have commentary and open house blog responses where parents right here are invited to to give comments and feedback to the uh, blog form itself another one just uh, you know ongoing synopsises of a of a specific week mr huey's blog Ms. Melnick's Westdale Arts blog where they can celebrate the work of students so that it's not just a student to teacher one way, one person to one person relationship. It's, it's something that could be celebrated and shared and viewed by all. And then we have another one, Mr. Neal in his class 209 speaks and you can see the children. They have, they have life, they have personality.
functionality. You can see what they're doing in the classroom. You could participate in it. You can understand what it is that they're doing. And then the learning goals and the success criteria on Mrs. Matthews clearly stated of what the child is doing, what they are learning, and exactly what it is they need to do in order to be successful so now I, as a parent, know exactly how I can support my child at home um, with these types of ideas. So definitely making transparent learning through a digital space by using the commons here in HWDSB. And then, cognizant of time, but wanting to show you a couple of other things. That commons then, if we are working with students in order to help them understand digital citizenship and digital footprints and everything else like that, I've really been very passionate about supporting parents with the same. So how can we support parents in their understanding of their digital footprint, their interaction in a digital space, how they work on Facebook, how they work on Google+, and so that they can fully understand their physical presence and their virtual presence so that they can work with their children with the same. So the new parent toolkit, um, the link will be provided for you. Um, I see a comment there on privacy. It's a very good question. Uh, some of these blogs can be, uh, they can be private if the teacher so chooses, or they can be public. Personally, I always say make it public. Make your learning and what you're doing in the classroom transparent. The parents can blog at, or can re reply as guests. They do not have access um, as they are not a staff or student of HWDSB. And then all comments can go into moderation and approved by, by the teacher. So this parent toolkit, which is put out by code, is brilliant. And it talks on page 18 to 19 about digital portfolios. And that's exactly what this is, what I just showed you in the comments. Those are digital portfolios where students can put their reflections and podcasts and their writing and their videos and their blogs and their virtual posters and their voice threads and all of those things that they do in a virtual world and they can collect them and they can archive them. And it's an ongoing collection of their growth and of their learning. So the students themselves have a chance to go back through their blogs, review and reflect their work, and then the parent sitting beside their child is their full coach and mentor as mentioned in the parent toolkit because they are sitting down with them and they are walking through their work together in that virtual space. So unlike that little book that I showed you that my daughter brought home completed, you as a parent can sit down beside your child and work through it um, as it is building. Which led into our creation right now, and it's incomplete, but it's almost finished. And I've provided a link for you to our Raising Responsible Digital Citizens, which is a workshop for parents, which fully supports and elaborates in a practical way the, res the Raising Responsible Digital Citizens section in the, raise in the uh, parent toolkit that I just showed you um, in the previous slide. Um, again, wanting to provide parents and schools with a practical workshop, a practical application to the neat ideas and the neat kind of framework that's provided in the Parent Toolkit, but to actually give a practical application for them to work through. So the digital footprints for parent and child, the link is there um, on your slide. Please feel free to give me some feedback um, before we go live with it. Um, but wanting to help parents understand their digital footprint and their impact in the virtual world so they could be active participants with their children and provide them with some tips, tricks, and strategies for working with their children in a digital world um, so that we can open up those conversations using web applications like Repler beautiful application where you put in your Facebook account and it scopes your entire Facebook profile. Shows you a word cloud, as you can see in the left column, words you use on a regular basis, how often you're online. Opens up all kinds of conversations for parents and children as to how often they're, they're on there, what kind of words they use, what kind of friends they have, what kinds of things they like, what kinds of advertisements they click. Uh, I'll let you uh, follow through with the link to kind of look at Repler. I encourage you to check it out. Google Alerts, you could put in your child's name, you could put in your name, and Google will send you an email however often you would like to see it. You know, would you like to get it once a day? 
as it happens once a week. I receive mine once a week. Every single time my name is mentioned on the internet, I get an email. So those are things that parents can sit side by side with their children and work through and create those conversations and those relationships where trust becomes the norm. So that earlier I mentioned parents aren't going, aren't uh, seen as the as the kind of top down um, approach to to or more of that kind of policing big brother type of uh, type of philosophy of did you finish your homework, but more of that well. Walk me through this, building that trust, building the relationship where, where your child feels comfortable sitting beside you and scoping through their social profile. And then, uh, again, help wanting to help principals and wanting to honor principals, quite frankly, um, with the amazing things that they're already doing in schools is we have created and are about to roll out the Parent Engagement Toolkit Resource for Principals, which was designed in our SharePoint portal to aggregate and collect resources, ideas, and strategies um, in a dynamic way. And what this does is it effectively replaces, as I like to say, my quotations, the uh, static and dead resource binder. Um, Lauren and I joked the other day, but if you look in any principal's office, you will see 50 plus binders on a shelf. And listening to the voice of principals, I heard that they didn't want another binder. And plus two, binders are collections of work from somewhere else, from researchers, from developers, from other people. You don't know who they are. Well, why not create a uh, why not co-produce learning, much like we've mentioned with parents and students, where this particular toolkit is a co-created, co-produced binder that honors and celebrates the great work already being done through our entire school board by both reachable and tangible colleagues. So if you needed support for how to amend or adapt a particular strategy to meet the community that is of your particular school, which say is different from another school in a different part of the district, then you know who to call. You know who to reach out to. And so this is a oh, spelling mistake. I need to fix that. A combination of SharePoint and the Commons that I was just showing you for principals. So our SharePoint portal is internal. You must log in to get into it, and it's a collaborative space where principals and upper administra administrators, such as superintendents, are the uh, contributors. And what it does is it effectively collects and aggregates Twitter, things like PT Chat, the Parent Engagement Chat, um, the Deagle Parent Engagement Group. Every single time that I find something about parents, I, I add it to my Deagle group. And I, every time I talk to principals, I encourage them to join and participate in the group. So here we are inside our portal. The collaboration tab up here, the orange tab, is a collaborative space where everybody who is a member of our parent engagement toolkit, so all principals and all superintendents, are effectively contributors and authors. Here is our. Um, tiered approach to parent engagement that I had mentioned to you, an overview as to what parent engagement in our school board is, and then a collection of links to community partners, board links, and different types of site pages, such as engaging parents with digital tools, which will pull you in to a school support website. Here is a link to Joe Mazza's uh, conversation about using Twitter to engage parents. So rather than sending principals somewhere else, I just want them to come here, and I want them to be able to participate. I need to uh, change this particular one for the commons, but these are how do I get support documents for um, working with my community. And then I do believe that this is the here, parent engagement resources on the web. There we go, collecting the parent engagement chat on Twitter, parent engagement topics on Twitter, collecting the social bookmarks in the parent engagement Deagle group, and my Scoop It group. So this is an RSS feed that is pulling in from these variety of different web resources. And again, the parent engagement chat on Twitter. Not every principal uses Twitter, 
not every educator uses Twitter. But you don't need to be a producer, or you don't need to be a tweeter to fully engage and learn with the Twitter chat. So this way, rather than instructing somebody to go to Twitter and then type in parent engagement in the search and all of those extra steps, um, they can just click it, click through it on their, um, on their tweet or on their uh, parent uh, portal, and then it will take them right to it. So just wanted to be able to collect and aggregate one-stop shop for all parents here in the parent engagement uh, toolkit, which in itself is probably a, a completely different uh, conversation and a completely different show. But then to extend this collection of things here in our portal, we do have this connected principles blog on our commons and where principals such as Mr. Yo at Queen Victoria can talk about his and their, not his specifically, but their parent engagement strategy and something that they have done at Queen Victoria School here in our board. You can see parent engagement as a category, uh, things of principals to talk about and to share and celebrate their best practices. And then here we are at um, Prince of Wales School. Uh, which is highlighted in the ministry link for parent engagement that I'll share with you in regards to their after school scholars program where they invite parents to come into the school and to learn and to to learn about ultimately what they would like to learn about. So not setting the agenda, not not presetting the workshops, not presetting the activities, not presetting the classes, but actually inviting them in. What would you like to learn? And then from that particular meeting, creating a series of workshops that are specifically geared to what the parents have asked um, for for uh, for support on. And I think I'm going to close from an equity standpoint, recognizing that we are at now 10:10, a little bit over, but I'll finish here. This is an awesome celebration for us and something amazing for us to always remember in virtual spaces as well as physical spaces is the whole idea of equity. When we move into a virtual world, sometimes we tend to forget that, um, that there are very diverse cultures, very diverse ethnic groups, and, and, and linguistically and ethnically diverse people and parents that we work with. And, and we were called on here in this digital space by a series of students at uh, Helen Detweiler School. And, and they were like, well, I'm not represented in your commons. I'm not there. So if they're not represented, then their parents were probably having those same conversations at home. Like, where are we? When you create your avatar, when you create your digital presence, who are you? Like, you can't be who you are in real life. And that was a real eye-opener for us on how virtual spaces need to be extensions of physical spaces for parents and students. And um, you know, being based out of Hamilton, it's a very diverse community. And so therefore, this immediate instance of student voice that was allowed through this forum, through this very visible, very transparent, very digital forum, the student voice necessitated and affected a, a change that had to happen. So these few young ladies spoke. Um, Jared, who you have met here tonight, went to work with the Doppelme creators, and they created a hijab for the avatars. And so now those students have a presence. They have an identity that can match their physical identity. And parents can see that they, too, are represented here in our virtual space, and that they, too, have a voice and that we're constantly working and ensuring that all physical realities are represented and that everybody's voice is honored and that they have a way to express that voice just by filling out a reply form at the bottom of any given, um, of any given post. So a lot to digest, I know, in such a short time. Um, and I definitely wanted to share all of those ideas uh, with you, and of course, there's links provided for you so that you can uh, so that you can explore these further. So, Erin, I just wanted to say thank you. And Marie and I really hadn't finalized something. That this would probably be the last of our series until the fall, and I can't think of a, 
uh, a more appropriate show to end the season with. You have so much information, ideas, motivation to share this evening. I can't wait to get the recording out to people. I know we are over the time, and so usually there would be an opportunity for questions, but what I'm going to suggest to you, the folks in the room, that well, we'll collect those questions. I know you have uh, at blog at, I can't say your Twitter ID. Blogucation, you have Blog a Twitter ID. Blogucation. So yeah, Blogucation. Blogucation, we could carry some of this conversation, the question and answers there in order to help us expedite the time. Because I know we had some good questions, and we do keep a copy of the chat. And I'll post the chat, and I'll just post uh, the full Blackboard collaborate recording and audio recording and an MP4 embedded file so people can watch it uh, on their portable devices as well. So at that, um, Maria, did you want to say a couple of things before we sign off tonight? Nope. Just have a wonderful summer, everyone. Thank you, Erin, so much. And uh, be watching in the Twitter and PT chat hashtag and parent engagement hashtag. And we try to spread it around uh, for when we get going again in the fall. Well, I certainly will. And I thank you very much. And I'm pretty proud, actually, that I only went 14 minutes over. <laughs> 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 and I thank everybody for sticking with me. <laughs> You're worthwhile sticking to. So, no, we enjoy every Absolutely. Every minute. And, and, and it's unfortunate. Like, we will have to have you back more to talk about um, the last part about working with the principals and, and that part of uh, your projects. And it would be nice to also hear to get you back in the fall to find out what's happening with the Raising Digital Citizens program that you're working on as well. So, all good well, things to put, put on, on the, the list of things to come back to. Please, I'd love That'd to add it. Uh, as I say, the, the, co the code piece is just finalizing, and it'll be awesome to be able to share that with everybody. And I, it's, it's to have a, uh, my, uh, our vision is that it will have a, a facilitated and a standalone um, uh, component to it. And I'm really excited about the principal piece, and uh, we'll be rolling out to them in the fall. Great. Well, on that great note, I want to wish you all a very um, good evening. Some of you, it's just beginning. Those of you who are on the West Coast, and some of us are just off to bed shortly. And uh, 24 hours later, people will be seeing it over and over and over again. So thank you very much, everyone, for being with us this evening. Uh, Peggy in the chat has been sharing links, uh, as always. She does so effectively, along with her great comments. And it's been nice to see all the activity in the chat room tonight. So thanks very much, and have a good night. Thank you, and if I could, just very quickly, thank you, Jared. Right, thank you, Mr. Thank you, Jared. Thank you, Mr. Fox, for your participation, even though I put you on the spot. Yes, uh, ditto. Thanks very much for bringing that out. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night.